Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am the Dream Decipherer. And I help you to crack the code of your sleep and dreams so you can sleep sound and dream deep. This evening's uh, dream is an interesting one and I had to do a little bit of homework actually to be able to follow the clues that the dream was leaving for the, for the dreamer. And which brings me to an important point that you have to think laterally when you're looking at your dreams. Um, they don't happen necessarily sequentially or in a hierarchical way, um, but come from all kinds of sources, from comic books, <laughs> which was, I had to look up myself this, for this dream, to religious books, scriptures, YouTube, so quite wide, to be able to understand exactly uh, what the dream is trying to communicate to you. So let's get into this dream. It's it's definitely an unusual one. Um, the dreamer dreamt that um, he was living in uh, uh, on a housing estate, or what we would call in the states, of projects. And one of his neighbors were a couple that had an autistic or disabled son. The, during the course of the night, the dreamer found that the child had somehow left the, the apartment that the, the family lived in and appeared to have fallen down a flight of stairs. But when the dreamer saw him and went to, to advise the parents that the child had fallen down the stairs, when they got to the stairs, no child. So the neighbors quite rightly looked at, at the dreamer as if he was either crazy or playing some kind of very sick plank. It was only later in, in the dream that the dreamer under, found out that they, there had been the presence of an alien entity who the dreamer likened to Venom in Spider-Man. And that's where I had to look up cartoons, <laughs> I mean comic books, to find out what, who Venom was. Apparently, Venom is sort of like the alter ego of Spider-Man, dresses similarly but in black, and possesses people so that he can you know, commit mayhem where, whenever and wherever. So this alien entity that uh, the dreamer had identified had somehow possessed this child and moved the child from the stairs back to the bedroom um, without anyone noticing or even understanding what had happened. The dreamer also learned that the entity had put him on a hit list because <laughs> the dreamer had discovered the, the existence of this alien entity. Now, <laughs> you could have an absolute field day with, with uh, this, this particular dream because there's so many little elements to it. Uh, the first thing being color or lack of color. Actually, it's be black and white. And the character, Venom, dressed in black as opposed to Spider-Man who dresses in red, in red and blue. But what's different about this is that it's the fact of color appearing or not appearing in a dream can be significant, as well as the time of day, the time of year, etc. So there's something um, juxtos juxtaposed here where you have the image of the or the calling up of Spider-Man as the good um, soul. Then you have his, his counterpart or alter ego as Venom, which is the name in itself is, is quite significant as well, um, that functions as a counterbalance, as a counterweight to this, this good character. So... What is it about Venom that I find fa fascinating is the fact that this character, this entity, acts by possessing others and forcing them to, to do his will. 
And there's something about um, living in a, a, t a tower block or in the projects, as we say, um, and it implies even the name is uh, living, living on a housing estate. You have the various social estates from the first estate, which is the nobleman, to the fifth estate, which are the, which are the uh, journalists and people who commu do public communications. Now, it, assuming that a person, not always living in a housing estate, there is this, that perception that they're somehow of lower estate, lower class. And it's interesting that of, out of all of the neighbors, that the one that seems to have stood out uh, was this autistic child. Now, the, you know, children represent innocence, they represent all kinds of things, but what exactly did this child who was disabled or autistic represent for the dreamer? It's something perhaps to think about. Is that some, is there a situation in, in waking life where there, there are, um, he may be working with or dealing with, uh, people who are disabled or autistic. That's something to consider given the nature of, of the dreamer's work. Now, there's also something about, um, let's see, what does that, why does the dreamer take more notice of the child rather than the parents? Um, it's interesting that how does the dreamer notice that this child disappears out of it, out of the, their, his bedroom and at the bottom of the foot of stairs and the parents not even noticed that the child was missing or gone. Well, we'll come back to that one. But again, the child represents something. Is it innocence? Is it helplessness? Is it being, um, being dependent upon others what is what is that actually evoking for the dreamer and <clears throat> excuse me there was something about going falling down the stairs that the dreamer noticed that the child fell down the stairs and what came to my mind was as uh, the expression of fall from grace or or descent to a lower level at some at some point so what is this about going downstairs is it is it a descent into perhaps the corners of the, the dreamer's mind is it about falling from a higher state to a lower state that there's something about that that could be looked at a bit more the next bit that that was a bit inter interesting to look at was this notion of, of alien abduction, or in this case, not so much abduction as possession. Uh, the idea or notion of bilocation, of being in two places at once, uh, came to mind, and maybe there's something about that. I mean, the child was in the room, the child was not in the room. Um, it's almost a philosophical question that, where was this child? Um, there's also the implication that the mind is playing tricks, um, that the, what the dreamer was seeing was, was not real or that he imagined it to be real somehow. Uh, so there's a, there's an issue about what, uh, how things appear and how things actually are. And maybe there's something about that that the dreamer should look at that, Things are not don't always appear the way they seem to appear, or they're not what they appear to be. Now, the reaction of the parents upon discovering that their child was not at the bottom of a flight of stairs, um, and looking askance at the dreamer as if that they were either some kind of crazy prankster or just very sick. And there's something about the disapproval of others and, and sickness, whether you're the sickness of the, the child who has health problems or the sickness of, of being so cruel as to cry wolf and so putting off false alarms perhaps. Now 
this the the hit list I find I found really intriguing that this this alien who for lack of name um, we could say it's, is a stand-in for Venom from Spider Man and this entity has the capability of possessing people and apparently moving them around according to its will. But this, it's a symbiotic relationship Venom has that um, in the Spider-Man comics. Venom is, sim is symbiotic in nature. So it not only is it using the other uh, person to, to survive, um, I'm not sure what the by Venom, but nevertheless, it's a symbiotic relationship where the two are intertwined quite intimately. Uh, but usually, when there's a symbiotic relationship, it's to the mutual benefit of both parties. I'm not quite sure that that happens here. Was this alien beneficial in some way to this child or no? And why was this alien so determined to exterminate the dreamer once he had learned that the um, dreamer was aware of, of the entity's existence? What is that about? Is that some like, some need to, to be kept secret or invisible or hidden? What does Venom or who does Venom represent that needs to be kept in the dark? That's something that the dreamer may want to look at here again to color and the fact that the venom uh, person this entity um, is was likened to be the opposite of what we associate to be a crime fighting good guy spider-man but be although they're opposite they're linked to one another they're the opposite faces of one another. And there's something about perhaps integrating both parts of ourselves, both the, the, you know, the sweetness and light bit of ourselves, as well as the darker, not so, so nice and light part of ourselves as well. Because without the two halves, we're just not complete. We are darkness and light, and we have to embrace both in order to be the best person we need to be. So perhaps there's something for the dreamer to look at with regard to integrating the darker side of their personality, or perhaps there's some concern about being possessed by the dark side. There's also that possibility as well, in which case there's, there's some fears perhaps that may, may need to be looked at a bit more closely. So there you have it. There all kinds of elements in that dream and there's many other things that can be looked at and again when we look at dreams um, after a period of times past we can still pull out more information uh, because we have newer experiences newer different understandings of things and can look at the dream from a slightly different perspective with the passage of time so i thank you so much for watching and listening I hope that gives you some ideas about how to look at your dreams. And if you have any questions, you can always, always, always drop me a message with your 12 noon on Thursdays, and I'll be happy to give you an, a feedback anonymously live on air. Until the next time, have a great evening and rest of the week. Have a Wonderful, wonderful time. Stay safe and well in this weather, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.